Today, in fact versus opinion, we are going to discuss about evidence against bypass surgery on angioplasty in reducing the chance of death, heart attack and hospitalization in patient with chronic stable angina. So whenever we indicate a treatment, the treatment would have to achieve certain objective. For example, if you are uh, prescribing a painkiller, the objective is to reduce the pain. The patient who are taking the drug should have their pain reduced or eliminated. Similarly, in bypass and angioplasty, since they are very invasive procedure, there are certain objective should be achieved by a patient who undergo these procedures. There are four objectives in bypass and angioplasty. First is quality of life. The patient who have symptoms, whether it's a chest pain or shortness of breath or any other symptoms related to cardiac disease should eliminate it or reduce. Second is death. Obviously, this is the main reason the patient opting to go for a bypass and angioplasty in spite of the high risk involved in the procedure. So, death has to be eliminated. Third is uh, heart attack, non-fatal heart attack. So, they also assume that going for a bypass and angioplasty, naturally the risk of heart attack would come down. And fourth is hospitalization. So, after these procedures, they should not go for hospitalization for the same disease for which they are treated. So, this four objective is what is uh, primarily uh, should be achieved in patient who go for this highly invasive procedure. Now, in this four, there are ample evidence to show that these procedure have effect in reducing the symptoms or improving the quality of life. But the other three, the death, non-fatal heart attack and uh, repeat hospitalization or hospitalization for the same disease have not shown to change in spite of patient going for a bypass and angioplasty. It is merely an opinion from the cardiologist or cardiothoracic surgeon that this patient may be able to achieve this. But the evidence point other words. There is no evidence until today these uh, procedures can able to reduce this three objectives. Um, now, if you want to evaluate further, I have carefully said it's stable. So, what is this stable means? Uh, basically, a patient who walk into the clinic uh, and getting a consultation for his disease considered or chest pain or the same. But in cardiology community, this chest pain or angina is classified into two major categories. One is stable angina, another is a unstable angina. Angina means just chest pain. So what is this stable chest pain and what is this unstable chest pain? So stable chest pain means usually experience of discomfort or a pain in your chest when they do when they uh, when this patient do some activity which they are not used to or if they are running suddenly there is excruciating pain in the chest and when they stop doing the activity the pain goes off or sometimes it may require certain drugs to be taken example sorbitrate or nitrate they put under the tongue and as soon as they place the medicine under the tongue uh, the pain disappears so this is called stable. So in this stable pain, patient would be able to carry out the regular activity. If they are working in their office, they continue to do their work. And second is this unstable chest pain or unstable angina. So this is completely different. The difference between stable and unstable is like a mountain and bowl. It cannot be compared. It both are completely two different entities. This people should understand. So in unstable angina means in this group of patients, the pain is very severe, even happen while they are resting. So there is a imm imminent uh, chances of getting into heart attack and it will not relieve by rest as well as it will not relieve by any drug. Even if you take a sorbitrate or sublingual nitrate to relieve the pain, the pain would not disappear. This is what they term as acute coronary syndrome. This happens because the block got uh, uh, what you call as the block get damaged. So once the block get damaged, there is a clot formation in the uh, block, blocked area of your arteries. It can be partial or it can be complete. So this is a condition where we call unstable and this is a condition where bypass surgery and angioplasty should be done at the earliest. Now if you look at the previous objective, quality of life, uh, preventing a death, 
or reducing your chances of heart attack, reducing your chances of hospitalization. All can be achieved if you do bypass surgery in this unstable patient. Now coming to the clinical practice across the globe or very prominent in India, 80% of these interventional procedures are not done in unstable but are in stable patients. And remaining 20% also, this patient who got a heart attack or severe pain got admitted, they have been waited until they are changed into stable condition and then they are operated. So basically most of the surgical procedure or interventional stenting or bypass angioplasty is done only in the stable uh, patient. So uh, basically it is an assumption. So there is an argument which is only opinion. There is no evidence or it is not based on facts or clinical studies. So it is been presented to the patient. Yes, you are stable. But if you undergo this bypass and angioplasty, we can prevent you to going from uh, stable to unstable. So through this assumption, 80% of the surgical procedure or angioplasty is done across the globe. Now, it's a false assumption with no evidence because what we are uh, what we are arguing here is fact versus opinion. So, I'm clearly saying this is only an opinion of your cardiologist or a cardiothoracic surgeon, and there is no evidence to support this claim that in stable patient we can do it. Now, immediately there are proponent and adversaries. Some of them they keep arguing bypass surgery and angioplasty is not good. It's obsolete. It should not be used in patient. Well, that is also wrong because I clearly said in unstable patient, it has a great potential to save your life. But in stable patient, it's going to increase only your risk or procedural risk like renal failure, heart attack, stroke, hemorrhage, infection without providing any benefit on death, rehospitalization or heart attack. So let me come up with an example. Now it is in the COVID season. I think if I give this example, you may be able to understand better. Now there is a drug called chloroquine. This chloroquine is a life-saving drug in patient with malaria. You give this chloroquine drug to the malaria patient, the malarial disease is resolved, patient is cured and death is prevented. Absolutely fantastic and this is how the drug should act. Now something we call as repurposing the drug. During the COVID period, the same chloroquine has brought into the COVID-19 treatment under the assumption if you give this chloroquine drug to the COVID patient, they may not get hospitalized, they may not, they may not, they may not enter in the ventilator or if in the ventilator they won't die or they may come out of the hospital at the earliest rather than without the drug. Now this was uh, done on a randomized trial when they evaluated and need evidence for that, it came out in the uh, opposite. They said, even if you put chloroquine, first there is no benefit. Second, the patients are put under more risk. Then what happened? They thought chloroquine is a very bad drug. It should be stopped and, and no patient should be on chloroquine. Yes, it is a fact with the evidence. If chloroquine is used in COVID, it is not useful. But remember, that same chloroquine should not be argued, will not help in patient with malaria. Similarly, bypass and angioplasty is a fantastic treatment which revolutionized medicine in managing patients with unstable or acute coronary syndrome. But it does not play a major role in stable condition. So when there is an argument, it is wrong to argue bypass and angioplasty is bad, but it is only the indication which 80% of the people are undergoing bypass and angioplasty is absolutely wrong. Now, what are the evidence against bypass and angioplasty? Because as we are uh, discussing, now we need evidence to say that bypass and angioplasty is useless in, angio in patient with stable condition because other three factors, the death, uh, heart, uh, death, heart attack and hospitalization is not reduced. Now, how do we know that? Now, from decade after decade, many studies have pointed out this is what it is a fact. The bypass angioplasty will not have any effect in stable patients. But the argument from the interventionalist and cardiologist is the technique of bypass and angioplasty is advancing decade after decade. Yes, it's really a fact because initially if you want to go for a bypass surgery, the risk is very high and also the graft or the vessel they take from your leg is only venous graft. But as a, as a procedure advances, 
they started taking grafts on your uh, uh, arm, which is radial artery graft and internal mammary artery graft. They are much better than your venous graft. And also surgical procedure has been improved from invasive to less invasive. And in fact, it has gone to the point of uh, leaving the patient on a beating heart. So beating heart surgeries and all this uh, procedural advancement has made surgery much more efficient. So the benefit of doubt is given to surgery. They said, yes, there is no evidence to say bypass angioplasty could save a life. But because the technique is advancing, as a benefit of drug, a benefit of doubt, still you can continue. Similarly, the angioplasty people also argued in the same way. Technology is advancing. So still we have to do it because this advanced technology may change the outcome. Fact, because initially if you see, angioplasty is just opening the vessel. And then they put a metal uh, wire mesh, which is bare metal stent. Then the stent becomes drug eluding stent. And then there are a lot of advancement in the drug eluding stent and they come into bio reabsorbable stent. So all this advancement as a benefit of doubt is given to interventional procedure, both bypass and angioplasty. But remember, from the decade this procedure start, multiple trial, I can say from RETA and then MASS and then uh, it come to uh, freedom, fame, courage, orbita, Barry and recently ischemia. All this trial along with meta-analysis and multiple data, uh, data analysis all have clearly shown only one thing. Bypass and angioplasty will not prevent death, will not uh, prevent a heart attack or will not reduce your chances of getting into hospitalization because of the same disease. When compared with the medical management. So if you are on medical management, Conservative management is equally effective. You don't have to go for a high risk procedure because the risk is also much higher. So, uh, now there is a recent trial called Ischemia, which is published in 2019. And this has taken care of both surgical procedure and angioplasty have achieved the maximum technical progress. With that, they did a trial to check on stable patient whether this bypass surgery on angioplasty would be able to achieve the objective, the four objective. It came out only the first objective, some sort of quality of life improvement has been achieved when compared with medical management. But all other three, which is essential and which is why the patient chose to go for a high risk procedure, death and non-fatal heart attack and then the hospitalization did not change between the medical management group and patient who undergone for this high risk interventional procedure. This trial along with some other trial which is a breakthrough in the field of cardiology which can discuss in the second presentation.